Good morning. I'm going to give it a few minutes, see who joins. We'll get started about two minutes after. Hope everybody's having a good day. Where I'm at, it's snowing out, and we're expecting about one to two inches of snow. Eleven oh two. We'll give one more minute and get going. Thank you for all who come and taking your time. Okay, we're going to get going now. Welcome. We're going to talk about pra best practices for keeping our personal data safe or your personal data safe and how we can keep things. And I'm going to talk about some of my experiences, um, how I've done things, some of the practices I use with my family, um, some of the things we need to talk about while we're all working from home. And this is really about our own data. So background, um, my name is Michael Coopersmith. Um, integrated, I'm CEO of Integrated Technology Systems. We're an IT solution provider since 1994. I've been working with computers since the 80s. Yes, it kind of dates me, tells you how old I am. I love working with technology. I will tell you though, the security has changed everything and our connectivity has changed how we have to work and what we have to do. I currently have two computers, one phone, one tablet that I need to keep secure on my own stuff along with a whole bunch of stuff. I have a password manager. I looked last night as I was putting the final pieces of this together and I have 650 different passwords in my vault from different um, unique logins, to different websites. Probably some I don't use regularly, probably about 75 to 100 I use and all those each have a distinct complex password to them. So we're going to talk about how we keep connected. So I've used this video, um, this diagram before. This is basically how do I look at protection as our house. How do we keep our house connected? How do we keep the data safe around our house? Typically in our house, you know, we have a door, we have a lock in the door, we have a deadbolt, we may have an alarm, we may have cameras, we may have a fence around it. We do a lot of layers to keep people out. However, if somebody really wants to get in, they're gonna still get in no matter how many layers we put in there. 
And I look at security, or we look at security as a layered approach as well. So we're gonna to talk to you about how we can keep that layer in place. So some of the challenges we have today, we're all connected in the world. Um, we have multiple devices. As I said, I have four devices, probably have a few more. Each type of device has security differently, whether it's your computer, maybe it's a PC, it's a Mac, maybe it's an iPhone, maybe it's an Android, maybe in our household, different family members have different types of devices with different types of security controls. So we have to work on that. And we have lots of data out in the world that we have on websites, banking sites, other places. And honestly, every one of them requires a username and a password. The usernames typically our email address, which is easy and publicly available. And then we have to keep a password for all the passwords we have. And honestly, in my opinion, there are too many passwords, remember. Before I went to our password manager, I used three or four passwords with different variations with a star, an exclamation point, a capital letter. But basically, if you guessed my password or my password was out in the dark web, you could start to work to compromise it. And then lastly, we don't know what we don't know. And I see a lot of people with Gmail accounts or other stuff. And I said, um, set up multi-factor and they don't even know what it is. We're going to go into that today. So we're going to explain some of what we don't know and try and get you some, a little bit of knowledge and get you pointers where you can move forward. So one of the first things is securing our devices. When I look at a computer or a desktop or a laptop in our household, and in my household, we have this. Ideally, each person should have their own computer we should not be sharing if it's financially feasible. So that person, each computer should have a username, password, complex password, password should be changed, have a screen lock on the computer so when they walk away, the screen will ask for a password on it. Um, their updates are kept up to date. If you need to share a computer and you need to do that, make sure that each person has their own account on the computer and not everybody has what they call admin rights to the computer. Each person can't install software. What this does is in a personal situation, if people are sharing, each person's settings are unique, each person's outlook's unique, their browser is unique, all their settings are unique, which also changes the security. So nobody's saved passwords. Let's say you go log into your bank and it was saved, which I don't recommend. And then your child went and used and logged into the same computer with your same account, with your same information, and went and logged into the bank, they'd have be able to go to chase.com and log right into your bank account. If they had a different account and they had a different username and password, they would not be able to do that. The passwords would not be set. The cookies would not be set. Again, remember, you need a complex password on your computer. You can't just put your daughter's name, your pet's name, or whatever else, your computer can be compromised. I'm actually very careful. Even when I'm out in the world prior to COVID and I was out in the world in a place, I only like to use the finger touch or something else or make sure my keyboard was covered. I didn't want somebody taking a picture behind me in the public world and actually seeing what keystrokes I put in and swipe on my laptop. I'm very, very careful. Try to be very careful. I'm a little paranoid at this stage. And lastly, which we've seen a lot of times in the world when we're servicing IT, is don't put a post-it note with a password right on your computer and walk around with it. That's basically saying, hey, if I lose this computer, um, you have everything on it. And then make sure that you go in, whether it's a Mac or a PC, that you go to Windows updates and you apply those on a regular basis. If it's a personal computer, it should be set to automatic. And yes, apply all the updates and make sure that you're following through with all those updates. Make sure your antivirus is updated. Windows comes with um, Defender, which for home use is pretty adequate and works well. Um, and make sure all those pieces are in place. That's the first step. I, you know, we don't want to walk up to a computer and just have, you know, be able to just 
press the enter key and somebody can log in. Okay. And with passwords, um, we can turn around, I use phrases. So for instance, um, one of the phrases that I may use would be is I like computers, right? So I would put instead of a I, I'd put a one and then an L and then another one for the I again and a K and a three. And I'm able to use a phrase by substituting some numbers for letters and then changing the case in the middle of the word. Makes it easy for me to remember, but harder for somebody else to compromise. When we're looking at our mobile devices, iPhone, Android, tablets, um, really we should make sure we have a six pin, um, make sure our number is six pins, it should be unique. I'll tell you, I don't follow that completely myself. I have six numbers but some of my family members use the same one, probably should change that. Um, I realized that as I was actually writing this, your device should be regularly updated with security updates. I know Google updates their phones on the Android side, Apple updates their phones, follows on the tablets. Um, make sure all those updates are done on a regular basis when they're prompting you to get them done. There are reasons. Apple doesn't go into all the security issues Google goes into a little bit more, but a lot of times when you're seeing an update come out of the blue, it's because there's a security issue out there. Only install the apps from the app stores. Do not side on Google phones. You can side load apps or use a non-authorized Google store besides the app store. On the Apple phones, iOS, you only can use the Apple store, the app store, unless you were to jailbreak the phone. When you jailbreak the phone, you're actually using a security compromise on the phone and going around Apple security. And now your phone is out there on the market to be compromised further. Make sure auto and lock is enabled for your screen. So my phone, basically after a minute of non-usage or I put my phone down, my phone is automatically locked and somebody can't get into it who doesn't have my face or touch ID. So one of the ways to come around that is I have touch ID on my iPhone enabled so that it sees my face. I can go in, I can open the phone, um, older phone, some other phones use touch ID where they use your thumb or your other finger negate some of the problems of people worrying about always oh, my phone being locked, but it really does protect you. Make sure when you're also using your pin out in the world, that you know who's around you and that somebody isn't looking and can grab your phone behind you. So how do we secure our data? Most accounts um, are secured with the username and password. People generally use the same password across multiple accounts. They use their children or the pets names or what most people use. So generally what happens then is with a little research we're on Facebook or we're on some other place and our, or some announcement comes out and our child's name's out there or our pet's name's out there and people, if somebody really wants to get to your data, they can look and compromise and go through your data and do some research and socially hack you. So that's some of the ways that happens. So. As I said before, passwords are hard to remember. So we'll talk about some strategies around that. So some of the strategies that we talk about, use complex passwords. As I said before, we can use a phrasing on them. Um, I will actually afterwards, I should have included it. I'll send out how I do it in um, our documents download, I'll add a little piece on that. Set up for multi-factor authentication for many accounts as you can. It's a downloadable document that we have links on how to set up um, multi-factor for Google, Gmail, for your Microsoft personal account, for your Amazon account, for your Facebook account as well. I can tell you in my own world, I didn't even have the Amazon account set and we had a scare where somebody set up a fake Amazon account I realized, and I went and looked at the log and realized it wasn't compromised. And then we set up the multi-factor authentication on the account. P 
people are really devious out there. I can tell you that. And we got to make sure these accounts are parse tight and lock down. I'll go through a few more stories after that. So what the multi-factor does is we then enter a username and a password just as we did. And then it prompts us on the phone to enter a second code here. So I then took some screenshots from my phone. So these our codes are no good. So I'd enter a username and a password. I turn around at that point and I'd log in with my username and password on Amazon and it prompt me for a second form of code which changes every 30 seconds. You can see my Google account and one of my um, documentation platform accounts. And this is how I secure my personal and business data. I think at this point I have over 25 multi-factor set up for, between work and personal life. So I make sure every bit of data that I can secure has what they call MFA or 2FA on it to make sure that data is secure. The other way we can look at this is we also can make sure that we are going in into our Chrome, making sure that our data is safe. So if you go into your menu in Chrome on the right, um, you can go to safety check and run a safety check on your Chrome and it actually will go through and tell you make sure everything is tight and secure. That's something you can do on a regular basis. Also make sure um, your social media has proper security settings. Who are you sharing data with? What data, who can see what? So I gave some screenshots here of the Facebook data and you can go through a privacy checkup on your Facebook account. And I recommend doing this on a regular basis so that you know what data you're sharing and how, who sees what. For instance, on my data, I really secure about what friend or friend can see and only my friends can see data. So I try and tighten it down and look at this. And Facebook does change it regularly. So it's worthwhile looking at this and looking at your other accounts such as your Twitter account, your Instagram account. On my Instagram account, for instance, nobody can follow me without me allowing them to follow. They have to make the request and then I allow them to do the following because I want to know who can see me and what's going on. So some of the strategies we use um, that I use, I use LastPass in my business and personal life. I have a LastPass account for my business world that I keep all the passwords to lock into all the tools that we work with our clients with, all the things that I need to do for banking, all of the different pieces. In my personal life, I have a separate LastPass account. And some of those things are shared with family members for certain key things and all those information and allows me to keep unique usernames and passwords for the accounts. Um, so I, that's some of the things I do. I make sure now when I use a password manager, my password manager has, I think, an 18 character password, which is a phrase. It's set up with multi-factor authentication application. And basically, because that is the keys to my kingdom. And I keep a close eye on making sure there was any issues with LastPass. That's the one I'm not advocating. That's the only one. Well, as somebody came to us from a business aspect, that's the one I would recommend. Um, on a personal level, I know a lot of people use different ones, but as long as you make sure it's secure, tight, and you're keeping, and you make sure you have multi-factor set up, you should be okay. Um, what it allows is it allows you, to, one of the things a password manager does allow, it allows you to have a unique complex password for each account. So in my scenario, I have LastPass set up and it allows me to generate a complex password for each account. And maybe I'll pull this up. And I can pull this up here. And I have it embedded in my browser here. And I can go to my vault or I can generate a secure password for a website. 
and then I can actually fill that password in and it would save the password. So, and there are pieces for that where I can use it on my iPhone, I can use it on my tablet, I can use it on Android. Actually, they're integrated into the devices now. So I use the same password manager across my phone, across my computer, and have access to that data. So that I can have complex passwords across the board. How can we control our data? So one of the things that I look at is I'm very careful and I'm very, very, and I've trained my family members and other people in my family about sharing data and what data should be shared and what data shouldn't be. These are the key pieces. You never want to share a social security number or birth date, bank account, or credit cards in an unencrypted email. When that data, when you do that, that data can be forwarded to anybody and anybody can have access to it. Once I have a social security number and your birth date and a bank account, they can pretty much do anything they want with your personal data. Credit cards, it's we don't want to go through the hassle of having to redo our credit card. So I'm very extremely careful with that data. Somebody asked me for a social security number, I'm either putting it in the portal and dealing with a bank or other institution like my accounting firm, we load it into their portal. Um, if I'm making sure my birth date, my bank account information is very, very secure. And basically, a lot of times when somebody will ask, I'll say, no, I'm sending you an encrypted email with this information. So I think it's an area of education that people still have. I've seen lawyers actually ask for this. I've seen other accountants where they're sending that data out. We really do not want anybody sending us data or asking for us to send them data with our personal information on it. And in certain states, it's actually illegal. I know in New York State, there's protections for PF, um, PHI, personal health information, um, personal identifiable information, any data really should that. The other way is, which is extremely important, is make sure your credit reports are locked. These are the three um, credit bureaus, Experian, Equifax, and TransUnion. And it came key to me in my world. I had actually had a situation where a account was opened and I didn't figure it out. And we looked and I had all three credit bureaus locked. Somebody used my name with a different social security number. I called the bank I said, and they verified it was not my social. They closed the account, but Somebody used my name, my address. I was getting bank statements on it. So people are very crafty out there. So we need to make sure that those pieces. Now, the challenge is if we're going for a new car, we're going for a mortgage, we're redoing any of those things, we need to unlock the credit reports. And some of these agencies now have allow you to schedule the unlock period, five days a week, two weeks, three weeks, and they'll automatically lock. Some of them, do not and we have to remember so one of the things i do is i put a calendar entry on my own personal calendar saying after i've dealt with the transaction as a reminder to go back and lock my credit reports because that's one of the biggest key pieces without our credit reports being available people in general institutions cannot issue credit out without that information so one of the other things that we kind of look at is when we're protecting that data is disposal of the devices. Make sure you wipe your computer with the wipe utility. We have a downloadable document from we give you that we can show you a tool that can do it. If you take your computer to a recycling place, make sure they will wipe it. Um, confirm that. If not, you should really wipe the drive before you take it there. Mobile devices. Um, make on Apple and Android, there's an option to erase all the data from the device. Make sure the device is removed from iCloud or Google store or whatever, and make so make sure you've wiped it, make sure you removed it, do whatever you can that there's no data on the device to be recovered from the device. 
it's a really important part. The worst thing to have happen would be is somebody, an old device get in somebody's hand and actually has your personal data on it and they've got some keys to the kingdom. So we look at, you know, we can do all these things and all, and still things can happen. And I will tell you, I have identity protection myself in place. It's a form of insurance. We've done all the proper things in place. We've done all the work and still something happened, right? Some institution that we have no control over gave our information out to somebody who was compromised and our identity gets out there. So I'm not endorsing these. These are two that I use myself. LifeLock is great. They have a whole program. If you go into some of their other stuff, they have some additional security products for home where they'll include antivirus and they'll include other identity protection and even include a VPN solution for you. Experience much more on the credit side and has, and I have had it been a customer of Experian for a long time. So Experian, you can go in, you can call on both of them. And if you have an incident, you can look up who's seen your credit report, who's made inquiries, what type of issues have come up. So, and then if there was an incident, they both have insurance clauses on their things to help you recover, depending on um, which um, subscription you buy. And there's a representative that can walk you through what you need. So those in a general view is how we protect I look at protecting my house and how I use a layered approach. So I keep my devices clean. I keep try and keep my data away from people. I try and make sure all of those pieces happen and what I can do to keep everything secure and working well and easily accessible while being secure. However, I have insurance on my identity just as I have insurance on my house. And that's why we all, in my opinion, need identity protection as well as the day-to-day -day pieces of protection that we can put in place. So if anybody has any questions, please feel free to put them in the Q&A and, and we will happily answer any of those questions. Hey, Michael, I've already got a question for you. Sure. Um, this came in a little bit ago. Uh, what is the difference between 2FA and MFA? And how do I set it up for my Gmail account? Which one do I need? Well, they're really the same thing. I, 2FA and multi, and so 2FA two is two-factor authentication and MFA is multi-factor. They're really the same exact thing. And we do have a document where you can go and um, in our downloadable bet that we send the links to on how to set up multi-factor authentication or two-factor for your Gmail accounts. So if you look it up, if you actually Google Gmail two-factor, you can actually find the data on it, but our downloadable document has all the information for you. All right, I've got another one. I'm not very technical. How do I get started? Simply, I would say start with the simple pieces. Get Make sure your computer has the passwords. Make sure no users are sharing computer accounts on your computer. Make sure you set up multi-factor authentication for your primary email accounts. Make sure your bank accounts have complex passwords on them. Okay, here's here's the next one. I've, I've got two more for you, Michael. Okay. Um, if I follow your advice, am I fully protected? No, never fully protected. That's why we have insurance. I can tell you right now, my own experiences, I've had issues where we had, I had, we had the second round with Amazon. I had Amazon multi-factor authentication on my Amazon account. I had all the security advice I make here. And then a situation came up where I got home and all of a sudden I had packages I had not ordered from Amazon showing up at my house. 
my wife looked at her credit card and she saw these small charges from Amazon. And what had happened was somebody had found out my wife's credit card somehow had shipped goods to the house to make Amazon think it was the valid billing address and then tried to ship a big order to a different address. Luckily, Amazon caught it when my wife called Amazon and worked through it, but it was not on our primary Amazon account, but somebody got her name, her credit card and her address. And these people are smart. So. All right, it looks like the last question is, is it safe to use social media? I would say yes. And then we do have a question from another question. How do you get insurance? So from a perspective, um, yes, I think it's safe to use social media as an educated person. Um, social media, we need to make sure we understand our security controls. We need to make sure what data we're putting out there on social media. So today, My apologies. Beth, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. My apologies. So, as I was saying, make common sense with social media. Check our security settings. Be careful what we post out there. Make sure we have all the security we can for our username and password. Facebook allows for two factor. So does Instagram. Twitter, I believe, goes with the text messaging. Make sure we put all the security to secure our username and password and look at our sharing settings. So that's basically the piece. Um, I see a question out here. How do you get insurance? I believe on the, so one of the pieces is on the personal side, you can go, as I said, you can get, you can sign up for protection through LifeLock, Experian, um, I believe on a personal policy, there are now addendums for cyber coverage. On a business side, there are abilities to get cyber coverage in your company. Our company actually offers an option, which is not the primary reason for this webinar, but our company through our own cyber policy can offer an extension of cyber coverage to our clients as well. We can extend coverage out through that as well. So, okay. Um, pricing, um, pricing for LifeLock or one of those is generally about um, 15 to $20 a month. Cyber coverage, I would have to look into it. It's case by case basis, but the, um, I can send a link on the cyber, on the personal identity insurance. Um, I'm paying right now about $20 a month for cyber for identity protection for myself at the moment. So it's a reasonable cost. Any other questions? I have not had anything else come in, Michael. Okay. Thanks. Wait, we do have a hand up. I don't see a question though. Okay, hang on a second. What about using an RFID wallet? You know, that's an interesting point. I, um, I think it's worthwhile thinking about it using an RFID wallet. I, you know, a lot of our cards have chips in them these days and the RF, and a lot of those can be read from a distance. You know, we have touch pieces. I haven't heard of compromises, um, but I think it's worthwhile thinking of as I see what you're saying, your, how your wife's credit card, yeah, it's possible. I'm not entirely sure. I have not read a whole lot. I actually have an RFID um, card in my wallet that's supposed to um, 
prevent RFID reading, but there's been questions all the way around on this. There's no data that you, if you research on it specifically at the moment, but I don't think, again, adding an extra layer cannot hurt. Any other questions? That looks like it. Well, thank you everyone for your time. We really, really appreciate it. And see you in two weeks where we discuss more about how to protect your corp. How to, what is our next one, Beth? I'm sorry. Oh, don't put me on the spot. I'll email everybody out today. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much. Appreciate <laughs> it. Have a wonderful, safe day.